Cool. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Welcome back. You have reached Old Guys Still Rock. I am Blair Armstrong, and on my right is Brent Wright. Uh, we are two guys with, we think, have a ton of wisdom. Uh, <laughs> and we're going to share that with you because we know that when you talk about it around the water cooler. Uh, I am, again, I'm Blair Armstrong. I am with Cobalt Banker, Team Armstrong, as you see behind me. Brett Wright is with Brett Wright Incorporated, a uh, man of many businesses uh, throughout the Eugene, Oregon area. Speaking of, how is Eugene, Oregon today? I know you guys, you know, when we talked last week, you were just getting out of the ice storm. Yeah, so it's uh, it's completely different. It's 51 degrees. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, from 16.9 at a low <laughs> to, uh, to 51 at a low uh, for the day. Kind of wild, kind of crazy. Well, that's good. So everything survived. You had a little bit of a water scare. And mm -hmm. as I said to you, you were cleaning that up uh, the last time we spoke. So all that's done. Everything's ready to rock and roll with you guys. Yep. Yep. Okay. They, cool. uh, treat, treating people this morning. So, and, and that's yesterday, good. actually. So that's good. We, were, we were here all weekend making up the difference from when being gone. And we had people that needed to reschedule. So it worked out really well. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> so for those you don't know, as I said to you, I'm, a, I'm in real estate here in the Coachella Valley. Uh, if you haven't been out in this area before, Coachella Valley range from basically Palm Springs all the way out to a, a town called Coachella. And there's towns in between Rancho Mirage, Cathedral City, Palm Desert, Palm, uh, Indian Wells, uh, La Quinta, Indio. That's basically the Coachella Valley. So we are a luxury specialist realtor. And then as I mentioned earlier, right for introductions, uh, Brent Wright is Brent Wright Incorporated uh, from why don't you go ahead and tell everybody what you do, <laughs> body shops to payroll. Yeah, to body shops to payroll to wellness centers now and coaching. And uh, so that's my passion. I really yeah. enjoy the coaching. I really enjoy uh, helping people solve problems. That's really what I'm good at. That's really yeah. what I like. It's what I like to be good at. Let's put it that and, way. And here, and that, that's how we're here. We're in episode <laughs> number 34 today. 34, yeah. And I can't believe that. And I heard something that really... It touched home to me. It was on a Craig Rochelle podcast from uh, Irwin. I want to say I want to say Irwin James. I may mm -hmm. be butchering that a little bit, but <laughs> uh, and I kind of and I think it really set the tone and the foundation of kind of why we started this because you and I have the same mindset of why we're doing this. We want to help people get better, right? Yep. And he and and Craig asked him why are you doing what you're doing? Because you don't need to do what you're doing. It's a pretty successful person. And he goes, I didn't become a leader to lead. I became a leader to help ele others elevate. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really, so if you're watching this for the first time, that is really what we're here for. Um, we are taking our trials and tribulations, our successes, our wins, uh, and sharing those with you in hopes that you share back with us your trials and tribulations, your hopes and your, you know, your hopes and desires and all that stuff. Because that information that we put out through here, um, when we're starting to see that, I think that you're, I mean, you're talking with the people mm -hmm. that are surrounded in your circle and the people in my circle and some of those intertwined really love what we're doing. Um, because I think we're the only two people that have the, the kahunas to do this right now, <laughs> to put ourselves out here and be super transparent and sometimes get a little choked up. And, yeah. But, you know, I love you have, I don't think without you, I would have never done it in this magnitude. I would have continued to talk about real estate in a podcast way, but I mm -hmm. think um, we're even in a meeting today and I just brought that up. It's like, why are you growing a team for real estate? You know, we're, I have David. We had some other ones that didn't make it, but we're looking. We're constantly looking for new realtors to become part of a team. Is because yeah. I want to help others become more successful than me. And mm -hmm. when we're sitting in this room today uh, with about eight other realtors, um, they're like, "Why would you want to be some? You know, because I can't get better if someone else doesn't get better." Yeah. Right. And I think the same thing with you. You don't. You know, you and I have talked about this many times, right? Um, you don't have to be doing what you're doing right now. You could 
shut it down and have a pretty good life. But I wouldn't well, be hanging it out there every day, right? <laughs> you wouldn't be hanging out. And you get, you would get, you know, <clears throat> sit around. I, put it, I literally put it all on the chopping block every day. Yeah. At the, at the end of the day, it's either it didn't get cut off or it got cut off. Those are the, the only two options. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. live a zero options mentality. It's win or lose. That's it. Do you think a lot of people still have that? No. Why? What's your, what's your, what's your mindset? I, I agree with you, but why do you think that? It's life's too easy. Everything's at your fingertips. I mean, I was talking to a guy the other day. Um, I said, you know, when I first started restoring vehicles, we had to go to swap meets. Mm -hmm. We had to go to car shows. We had to network with people. We had to go stop by this guy's house, this guy's shop, this guy's this, to go dig in his basement. We had to wait for Hemmings Motor News, a book about this thick. It used to show up in the mail once a month on the same day. And you'd thumb through it trying to find your parts. And you'd call and you'd talk to some guy in Kansas and he'd go down to his basement or into his barn and try and find that part for you. And he would call you back mm -hmm. in a couple of days to a week to maybe a month. And now you go online, you go on your phone, you can find it, you order it. It's here. If, if it's not here in two days, you're mad. You're calling somebody. You're up their tail. Right? Mm -hmm. it's, it, the world's a different place. It's small. It's very small. It is small. <clears throat> but let's get into what we're talking about, you know, uh, about. And I think that leads into what we want to talk about is supporting small business, supporting your friend's business and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, at the day and age that we have, um, mm -hmm. everyone has websites and kind of buy it online and stuff like that. Uh, obviously, the kings of that are... You know, your, your big box stores, your yeah. Home Depots and your Amazons and stuff like that. Do you think that survives in the long run? Because I think it's it is smaller. The, 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 the big guys are going to get bigger, which is going to create a smaller piece of the pie in that big sector. Uh, looking at a statistic right now online, 33,185,550 small businesses in the United States right now employ 61.7 million Americans, totaling 46.4% of private sector employees. And it generates 44% of the active economy. Isn't that crazy? That's insane. 44% of the active economy. So likely... One of the businesses that you are buying online from and paying a little bit more, or paying a little bit less, likely somebody you know, maybe even like, maybe even trust, probably has a business doing that. And you're not supporting them. And I and think I'm not here to call people out. I mean, I, I'm not here yeah. to call you out. Like, but I look at myself and I have to look at who am, who am I supporting, right? Yeah, and I think, you know, we come back to that is it, it's easier. Uh, you said it earlier on this when we were talking, you know, it's just become so easy, right? And that's why was, we, don't, we don't take the time to do this. Stuff. Well, I, can, I can put in the search button, uh, find a catalytic, catalytic converter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just talking about it, why that popped in my head. Uh, find a catalytic converter, blah, 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 blah. And in two seconds, you can find it. And then in two seconds later, it'll give you 15 different websites that has that catalog and converter. Well, because the last time you had to buy one, who'd you call? You. Me. Right? <laughs> you got a guy, right? Yeah, I had a guy. guy right? But, so no I mean, different than your construction or your painting or your this or your that. You, got, you call your guy. You call your, mm -hmm. your person, right? And, mm hmm so let's go and let's stay with that because now it, it turns back to this. My thing, you know, when I obviously in real estate, people come in there, they hey, do you have a painter? Do you have a pool guy? Do you have this? Do you mm -hmm. have that? You know, and it's come to, you know, after they ask that part, I've now become this resource. Yeah. And if somebody goes, let me guess, you know, like, hey, are you looking for a painter? And they'll go, let me guess. You have a guy. I'm you like, have a guy. Yeah, <laughs> I have a guy. I have a guy that has a guy. And if I don't right. have it, I'll call this person because I know that they just dealt with that last week. Mm -hmm. And I, I, where we want to take this today 
is I think that's still super important that even though it's easy to go find from Amazon is to invest into that resource because those guys are just like you. Maybe you're starting, maybe you're starting a new career and you're starting a new business. You want to be a part of that resource. That's mm -hmm. why we have websites. That's why we have it. And better yet, if you are that resource and you have trusted individuals, it's more likely that the people are going to use you that I referred you to because I've already had an experience with them instead of like, eh, I know they have five stars, but is it real on this, mm -hmm. on this website? So I think the biggest thing is how do we combat that? I mean, you, you know, you were at this restaurant, you said the other day. Yeah. And I think what was really cool, would you share that? But I think what the real cool part about it is the guy actually asked you, what, how was your experience? Instead yeah, it's of a just new, sending new something restaurant. Through. Yep. New restaurant. Uh, they did their soft opening last week and uh, we just happened to be driving by and Figured we'd try it out. We weren't able to make their soft opening because of the ice storm. Mm -hmm. and in fact, they weren't even they their soft opening got pushed back three or four days because they because the ice storm, mm -hmm. and uh, we weren't able to make it in there. And we swing by, and they had a spot open last night, so we we hopped in there, and and uh, he came by and he said, "How's your food? How's everything? How's the service? I want you to be honest," he says. And I said, well, my steak was good, had a great taste to it. I said, it was, it, to be honest with you, it was a little bit uh, over char on, around the edges. Mm -hmm. I said, but it was tasty. It was good quality meat. Um, I said, if you're, if your gal, your busser gal, I would send her around with a water uh, pitcher. So that way when she's picking up and delivering the, the uh, you know, the dirty dishes and stuff, she could be topping off waters on the way by. He's like, that's a great idea. And, uh, and then, so then the bill comes. And I noticed it's about 30% less than what we, you know, than what the menu was. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I called him on it. And I'm like, why? And he's like, well, you know, you gave me some feedback. I'll give you a discount. You're a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, no, that's not how it works, man. I didn't, I didn't want a discount. Didn't ask for a discount. I'm expecting a discount. He's like, I know. That's why I gave you one. I said, if you are going to be in business, you have got to not give discounts. Right. I want you to be here tomorrow. I want you to be here next week. He refused to take my money. So I waited. He went back to the kitchen and I found, uh, found the, the gal, one of his gals. And, uh, I doubled the bill and handed it to her and walked out as fast as I could. You said you, you, you paid and ran, right? I paid and ran. I did reverse <laughs> ditch and dine. Yeah, exactly. No yeah. dine and dash here. But I mean, you know, one of his first lessons in business should have been don't discount, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody taught him that. Everybody's, mm -hmm. everybody's looking for a deal. And that's, I, I want a deal, but I want a different kind of deal. Mm -hmm. I want high value, willing to pay the price, but I want high value. I want good service. And mm -hmm. if I get those things, I don't care what the price is. Mm -hmm. You know, within reason. You know, I mean, if it's just a standard comfort food restaurant, I'm not going to pay $500 for dinner. Mm -hmm. I might leave a $500 tip, but I'm not going to pay $500 for dinner. Right. Yeah. But you know, it, it, double edged short with that, right? Uh, you are running a business and your margins are already short, especially in the restaurant world, but any type of business, especially now, because you're, you're dealing with, uh, big box stores and everybody has the same product and the same gadgets in some way. And your cost to buy them may be a little bit more than some than your next door neighbor. So if you're already giving discounts just for someone to like you a little more, um, you could create loyalty in a different way. And yeah. I think that if you create loyalty, basically what you said to the guy, take that information back and fine tune his staff, his cooking of the steak, whatever it was, <laughs> even though that was good, but make it just a, you know, 1% better, right? Yeah. It would be a hundred percent, but if you get it to 78, 90%, then you're, you're mm -hmm. good. You're making progress. Yeah. And people will appreciate that more than kind of like, well, okay, give you a 30% discount because they'll go find realistically another state joint opens up and steak may be a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Maybe. But I also said, you know, to a, a point of, since you're a business owner now is my fear for what he did, 
again, we're using him as an example, and this could be with any type of business. My yeah. fear of what he could do is now that he gave you a discount when he comes to use your services, he's like, well, I scratched your back. Now you got to scratch my back. Mm -hmm. And your margins are super small too, on top of paying a pretty hefty stuff, on top of paying a building cost and electricity and stuff like that. Well, your costs are probably a little bit more significant than his. And I'm, again, using this as an example. Mm -hmm. And you can't give that discount. So is that going to turn like, well, God, I, he didn't give me a discount, so I'm not going to use him anymore. I'm going to go find somebody else that do. Yeah. And that same thing could happen to him, right? Mm -hmm. Eventually, if he can't give a discount anymore because he's going to just, why they have bar rescue, right? Yeah. This guy's just giving away drinks and hoping everyone keeps coming into it. The only reason they're coming back and it's not really, it's not even so much about the food or the service or anymore about that. It's just because I get it for free or I get yeah. a discount for it. Yep. And it's setting up it's a dying tone it's a dying t it's it's a dying thing to it so yeah uh, so hopefully you know now we can't can't promote his business today <laughs> but we will promote it some other time we yeah. will have him on here uh and talk about his successes and his failures and, and what he learned about but um speaking of that um i have uh i had some friends that uh starting a new business and I offered them to be on here so that way yeah. we could talk about it and go through yeah. it and, and all of that. And, uh, interesting, interesting reply. Uh, we don't have time for that. We're more focused on growing our business. Yeah. I said, so you're focused on growing your business, but you're not going to get on a, on a, uh, on a podcast or on an Avenue that might bring, you know, more, right. You know, more visual to your business. That's interesting to me. Yeah, I think, um, well, first of all, fear will make you say funny things. Yeah. And, and this is an, an intimidating, it can be, uh, it can be very intimidating because you have to stare in the camera for, you don't have to stare at one, but you have to talk and you try to mm -hmm. find stuff. And uh, people realize it's just like having a normal conversation. But um, so if you are a business in Eugene or Portland or anywhere in the United States and you see this, and you want to reach out and help your business grow, we would love to talk about that. And it's actually really not talking yep. about your business. The people that we have uh, had on here have talked about their businesses, but there's also talking about, is, you know, what we've mentioned multiple times already today is this trials and tribulations of how to get that to grow. And we become a community of entrepreneurs or people going through life mm -hmm. that are having struggles and they know that we're not the only ones. And that is, again, we come back to, um, you know, the circle is due to is we live in a silo and we think, okay, no one else cares that we have this issue because everyone has an issue. We actually do care yeah. and we want to help you succeed and we wouldn't be doing this if we weren't, if we didn't care. So for the people that have come on here and were transparent with us, that's a big step for them. You know, this 1%, 2%, 3% better every day. Brent coming on here and doing what he does um, and sharing his wisdom. It helps him become better. And in turn, you know, you're helping other people, getting coaching clients off of there, helping their business get better. Um, you know, my feedback is we love what you're doing. Uh, slowly getting like, now they're asking questions. So what would it take for me to come on? I'm like, <laughs> if you want to sit at home and do this on your, on your time and do it for your time. But I think yeah. that they're, they're starting to get the understanding that, it's a good, it's a safe space. It's a safe space to share and to, to share some wisdom. I mean, I'm actually worried about the Instagrams and Facebooks. And even though that I, I vitally need them to get, to show my product, but I can go ahead and shake hands and kiss babies in there. The stuff that keeps the stuff that they're promoting to get more likes and stuff like that is, is it's yeah. getting out of hand for me. Yeah. And it's I'm, not I'm good. Like, it's almost damaging your, it's almost damaging, uh, damaging your, um, uh, I, what, your logo. What do I want to say to it? My, I can't think your of the brand. word right now. My brand. Thank yeah. you. Like being on there. And I know that you and I have talked about kind of, you want to, to kind of build your own little essence, Facebook thing. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I keep putting, I keep pushing it off. Um, the, the platform's built, and I, I keep pushing it off uh, just because, you know, all the delays and stuff with the Wellness Center and mm -hmm. uh, delays with 
you know, products for flipping some rentals that I have uh, that need to be finished up and things like that. So it's just a bandwidth issue, but mm -hmm. uh, the platform's already built. Everything's ready to rock and roll. I just need to, I need the bandwidth to be able to execute. So, yeah. so um, if you guys are watching this and you can help rent out, yeah, we do that. But I, I just, I just think that I think we're, I think it's just getting so much out of touch or we're actually where we want to go with that. And everybody wants to talk about, Oh, I, you know, Whatever it doesn't need to mm -hmm. go. There. You know what's on. You know what's on social media. It just it's just like everyone keeps pushing the envelope, and I don't understand it because no one's helping each other out and making yeah. anybody better on that. But going back to do you know I want to get back to what you talked about is is I I think that I think that you know that we're in this time of revival of small business and i know what you said about big boxes in there but i just feel like that right now we're having people search and try to find their little niche in there and how if you were starting all over again and as successful as you become how would you would you do anything different now would you do anything that, starting out back does that make sense what i'm asking you mm -hmm. yeah like, okay i'm starting all over again i've built it up you know it's taken me years and years and years it's kind of like the andy for 25 years i'm mm -hmm. but i'm still growing um or any type of people that have been in business would you do anything different yeah i would do i would do a couple of things different um and and a couple of things the same so uh one thing that i would do differently is that um i wouldn't hold back I would 100% go balls to the walls on every uh, in everything, mm -hmm. and and have less fear, and take more risk. Um, you know, they say the bigger risk, the bigger the reward. That is 100% true. So, and then be okay to fail. Uh, just really get right with that. That is 100%. A friend of mine uh, was here at the wellness center yesterday, and he had, he's not on social media, and so I was showing him the the video of the flood. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the kids cleaning it up and everything. He's like, that should be on page one of if you want to start a business, mm -hmm. this is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Right. Page one should be all the failures. Page two should be all the failures. Like the first 20 pages, he said, should be all the failures of anything that could happen in that business if you started. And and I think he's right. I, I, you know, but those failures are you know, where you get growth and where you get, you know, get, get to learn and get to prosper from, uh, go ahead. Yeah. And I, yeah. I, I, I just stay with it. It's an, so bad at interrupting. One day I'm going to fix right. this problem, dude. <laughs> One day I was a work in progress. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think that's spot. And I look at my stuff, you know, in the, in the real estate world, here is my thought is what I would think a lot of people say that if I'm sharing my failures, I'm showing that I'm weak. Of course, because we're right? all weak. Right. right. But I don't know if many of us would look at it that way. But people want to um, people want to live vicariously, right? Because they're not willing to take that risk. They want to live vicariously through somebody who is risking it all because they they want to be that they want to do that. They just don't have it in them to do that. And so by sharing that, you're sharing growth, you're sharing the ability um, for you to fail and then to mm -hmm. learn and then to grow, grow better at it. And that a lot of people, again, it, it's not that they are afraid or weak or, or whatever. They just might not have the type of personality that has the tenacity or that has the stomach for losing. But they don't mind watching other people and going through that and then rooting you on. We all need a cheering section, mm -hmm. right? So if you, again, the reason why we talked about this, we, you know, we brought it up is because even if you're not an entrepreneur, most likely somebody you know is, mm -hmm. and we all need a cheering section. Mm -hmm. It's tough. Yeah. Right? I mean, we showed up here and three inches of water and my wife looked at me and the first thing she wanted to do was cry. And I said, we're going to not, we're not going to do this. Mm -hmm. We're not going to give up. This is just a small setback. Let's rock and roll. And there's not a lot of people that have the ability to, to do that. I'm just crazy enough to do it. 
That's it. And I, yeah, and I think that's right. I think that we're all have. You are. You are crazy enough to, <laughs> to do it. You are the the silent giant, right? I've always called it for for twenty something years. You've been the silent giant. Silent and but deadly. Silent, <laughs> the SBDs. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, it, it reminds me of something that we talked to church the other day too. Is again, I, first of all, I, I go back to your buddy who has a restaurant. It actually asks you for feedback. I would love that. I wish more people would do that instead of will you just fill out this survey and let us know. Having that personal contact and that one on one, I think it's more. I think you get more transparency out uh, there. Yeah. Now, uh, what, one thing that I will add to that, because uh, it's definitely brought something uh, to my mind, is that if someone is asking you with it, don't sugarcoat it. Yeah. Be real with them. I mean, because it's at the end of the day, it's their business, and if you really do want them to succeed, dude, I really loved it. But you could do this, this, and this. Awesome. Yep. And and but but I think too is you have to if you're going to ask that inf- for that information, how did I do? Be prepared. Mm-hmm. Maybe they told you it sucked, and you've got a lot of work to do. Um, yeah. But take it with a grain of salt. Now you at, you tell that to me uh, four years ago, I'm going to go super defensive. Uh, yeah. You critique me in any way, I'm going to go super defensive. I'm still that way. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, Chrissy will say something and she has the best and she's like helping, she's helping me grow. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, it's like nails on a freaking chalkboard. And I'm like, no, because I did this, this, and this, and this, and you should, it's not that way. These are saying you do better. And I think that so much of us are trying to be great, to be that part. So I, whoever your guy is with the restaurant, I appreciate him asking about there. If you own a business, don't be afraid to ask people face to face, how was your experience? and yeah. be open to that. Uh, I need to be better at that. The only reason I'm saying this, and if with every other topic that we talk about, this is basically our therapy Thursdays mm-hmm. uh, type of stuff, and we like to get stuff out there. So now is I need to like, hey, how was your, I mean, I, mean I, I, I can pretty much figure it out, but I need to be more upfront about saying, you know, how was your experience with me? I judge my experience if people are calling me or have sending their, their friends to me, so on and so forth. Yeah, referrals are, are, are a good answer, but getting that information now, uh, right after the transaction or during the transaction, or having people call you and ask your different advice, um, it's, it's just to do that. So that's cool mm-hmm. too. Um, and I was just, it, but again, uh, I think the big thing is we need to be more transparent about that of uh, for all of us or our businesses, and you know, even giving feedback to the to waiters, even letting them know. The waiter or person or experience at a store, hey, I, you know, I come in here a lot. If you're at a grocery store and if you're having a good experience, and it's like I really appreciate all your work today, yeah, because um, that goes a long ways too. Right, and that's how we sure. grow these businesses. Yep. So Could anyway, you want to wrap her up there, bud? Yeah, man. Let's just get back to work and uh, going to do some stuff today. So, guys, that's it. Um, a shorter version for us today, but if you are a business owner, uh, if you're starting a business, whatever it may be, if it's a real estate company, if it's a mortgage company, if it's a, if it's a body shop, if it's, it's whatever, we want to help you succeed. Uh, as Brenton and I said earlier, we're not here to lead, we're here to, uh, we're, le- we're leading to elevate others. So again, feel free to go ahead and leave us your comments. Let us know what you thought on this process. But share us, as always, share your wins share your losses yeah. and don't be afraid to do so and if this is if this is a safe place for you uh please come on here we would love to have you on here so any final thoughts for you brother let's go make a damn difference make a damn difference okay get this music started too as as joe uh no jackson brown i almost said joe jackson <laughs> on here uh it's a lonely road out there but just know that uh there's a lot of us out here Uh, that are willing to help support you. So don't be afraid to reach out to us. Until we see each other again, guys, have a great, great day. Stay safe, but most of all, God bless. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.